Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today we are once again playing Pokemon this gym of mine, but this time we're going to be a fire type gym leader. Let's get into it. I decided to be a female protagonist in this game just to see if there were any other quests that I missed as a male protagonist. So along comes Matilda instead of Matt. We then choose Fire as our gym type. Our options are Growlithe, Vulpix and Magby. We decide to go with Magby just because it has Flame Body. We are then greeted by the Mayor of Umbul City as we get off the boat who tells us about how the townspeople have lost faith in the gym leaders because the last one just vanished and ran out on them. I then go to the gym and the Mayor is once again there saying, look, you don't need to be here yet. I like the fact you're early but let me take you to your house he then hovers over there don't know how he's doing it and this is where we can rest i then go inside find the flamethrower tm i teach it to magby and then i go to the town hall which is just being infested with these biker guys i defeat him get out of my town and then we go into the town hall and the mayor just tells us about the gym role we're only allowed three pokemon and they all have to be fire type i then decide to go with the old gym guy because i've already played through with the other two gym people and they all have a different quest line and i want to try out the old gym guys one so that's why we went with him after that we go into the gym and then again once the mayor is just in there he's just telling us about everything we got to do and then we go to the charity i donate a couple of potions just to get that reputation up and then we start trying to find some fire type pokemon i run into the regional forms of onyx which i believe is fire rock in this game and i managed to catch this pokemon this thing is an absolute unit by the way such a useful pokemon throughout this playthrough so that is why i decided to catch him give him flamethrower half Happy days. I then remember that there is a house after this cave. You have to complete all of the kind of trials or the riddles or whatever. And then they give you a starter with a really, really good move. So we get past all the trials and I go into the house. And I actually don't know which fire type to choose. I decide to go with Torchic because I felt like a fire fighting type would have been a bit more useful than fire flying. And uh, luckily for me, Torchic actually has extreme speed as its like unique move. So that's really, really useful because that's a really nice move to have after that i go to the karate guy and basically if you solve like five riddles he joins your gym which you have to do to get to the starter anyway so that's just an extra plus it gives you a bit more reputation as well and then we start our first day on the job as a gym leader nothing crazy for the first day they're only like level three pidgeys starlies what have you we can get through all of those really really easily we then finish the day after taking out four or five trainers and we have to gather um, behind the gym because that's where some of the gym people usually chill we then go back to the charity donate some more potions and then back to the gym to do some more gym leading and that is basically just what i do for the first like five to ten days because that's all you can really do you're just building up your reputation at the start of the game building up some levels for the tough battles that you do have coming up torchic is now level nine this voltor was annoying because i had sonic boom and stuff but either way after a few days as the gym leader we have this girl come over elizabeth basically saying look this gym leader i'm not a massive fan of let me battle her and we'll see what happens so that's exactly what we do we have to battle elizabeth she has an okay team but it's a little bit under leveled nothing that my extreme speed and torchic cannot handle flamethrower as well very very nice and dandy we take out elizabeth she's like right fair play you're not that bad i don't trust you yet but you can keep running the gym and then she goes and we don't really see her again for a very very long time so i after that, it's straight back into the gym because I got to do some more grinding. I got to do some more training. I got to do some more working. And then this guy comes in who is a little bit annoying because this regional form of Aaron is only level eight, but it learns Dragon Rage like really early on. So whenever you fight this, you're always like, okay, at the start of the game, I'm probably going to lose a couple of Pokemon. doesn't help that it has sturdy either. And then also we got this scientist guy who has another Aaron, but it's level 15 instead of eight. So this is the guy that you have to watch out for because yeah, he's, he's dragon raging left right and center he luckily roars us this time but anyway we take out a bunch more gym trainers and then my torchic starts evolving into combustion which is really nice because now i have fighting type moves on my team while still obviously having a fire type double kick would have come in really really handy against like steel types and rock types or whatever so that's really nice i then go to my mailbox and i've got a bunch of people that want to join my gym and so i just say yes to all of them because why not i need some gym trainers in my life we then go back to the charity donate some more potions back to the gym to do a little bit more work and as you can see the levels have started rising we have a level 17 staravia here against my level 15 magby do not like the double team there no thank you wing attacking me my flame body's popping which is why i went with my 
my boy Magby, and then we take out the Staravia. Nice bit of XP. I need to get Magby to level 20 to evolve it. We also start battling these level 23 Hatrams and stuff. Like I say, there is a bit of a jump in level uh, once you beat Elizabeth, so you have to kind of be on guard. You need to level up a little bit because these are some tough battles. Again, if you lose a battle, you just lose a little bit of reputation. It's not like if you lose so many you just game over. Well, I don't know, actually. I'm not sure if you lose a ton, but usually if you just lose, like, a couple, then it's fine. Um, I don't even know how I won this battle either because I've only got a Combuskin left and he's got a Hatrim level 23, um, but I do get two extreme speeds off. They start potioning left, right, and center as well once you beat Elizabeth, which also is not fun. So we take out the Hatrim, and then after that, we uh, basically get to gym leader level 2. And then the bikers come back, and they're like, bro, get out of my town. He's brought his friends with him, so I have to battle him once again. And uh, this battle, again, this is the tricky one, because the levels are quite high. He's got some really good mons. And this is obviously the guy you have to beat before you get to take on the Blissey Trainer, where you get all your XP. So the game gets a lot easier after this battle. But yeah, you have to beat this guy. And as you can see, Scraggy level 19 nearly destroyed my Magby. I am level 20 now though which is quite nice so they will evolve into magmar after this battle and then out comes uh sandshrew which isn't great for me because it's a ground type pokemon i've only got fire types i don't think it had like any crazy ground type moves or anything like that it had rollout which could have been a bit annoying but luckily combuskin made quick work of the sandshrew and then heracross comes in and this is one of his stronger mons it's level 24 it hits you hard usually it hits you with like really really good attacks so i'm very happy that went for a fury attack this time i then go for an area lace as well don't know why I didn't do that first turn because it's obviously quite effective but either way we take out the Heracross get a ton of XP on Combuskin which I was very happy about he then has Zorua Zorua is not a problem for me I can just double kick it twice and then obviously the Zorua dies not a issue in the slightest so we do take out this biker guy and then he kind of just dips off for a little bit longer he'll be back don't worry it's not the last we've seen of him but after that the commercial district opens up this guy's like yo come over here we got a lot of buildings for sale we got a big market this is the really really good part of the town and this is just kind of the money making part of the area you can just put a ton of buildings down here which just make you money overnight through the days really really useful if you need money in this game just plant a ton of expensive buildings and it will just shoot up after that we uh find blissey you know bliss the blissey trainer she's lovely she's got six level 50 blisseys with toxic orbs and it is just grind city these give you a ton of xp and now i need to evolve some pokemon i need to evolve my magby i also don't know why it didn't evolve at level 20 then i i felt like it should have i know elected evolves at level 20 but i don't know why magby didn't maybe his magby is like 25 or something either way not a problem we take out blisses six blisses and magby starts evolving into magmar now of course you can evolve a magmar in this game by going to the market there's a guy on the right that sells all of the evolution items like fire stones water stones magmarizers all that stuff and then of course i buy that stick it on magmar go back to bliss and start evolving my magmar into magmortar massive fan of magmortar really really like this pokemon and then got that and then onyx also starts evolving as well and i'm like bro what is this going to evolve into because i couldn't remember i don't know if i'd seen the evolution of this in like a past playthrough but it actually evolves into smeltix which i believe is a fire steel type really really useful pokemon and as well as that our combuskin also wants to evolve into blaziken so happy days all my pokemon are now fully evolved and we are looking very very good we're looking very very strong but i need a little bit more xp you know i, I need to be equipped for any situation if i go up against a water type i'm going to absolutely lose so i would like my pokemon to be at least in the level 40 region so that's exactly what i do i just take on bliss a few more times she's very very easy to beat especially if you have physical attack she also gives you a cheeky 800 pokey dollars every time you beat her so a little bit more money in your pocket never hurt anybody but we're here for the xp really so magmore to get us up to level 40 yard Blaziken does, Smeltic does, we're loving life, and then after that I go and decide to buy a building because I need to make some more moolah on the side, so I buy building plans uh, number four, which is a museum, didn't know if it was going to make me a ton of money or not, I don't know how much money it makes you overnight, again, it, it kind of adds up once you've got more than one building, but either way, it's a start, it cost me 10 grand, so quite a pretty penny, but either way, I go to this guy, I'm like, bro, just bought these plans, stick them up, love in life and then after that straight back to the charity giving more donations because i'm a nice guy and it just gives you a ton of reputation as well like a ridiculous amount i then go to this girl here who's lost her pokey flute luckily i found that in the cave where you have to answer all the riddles and then after that this girl wants a heart scale and i've got a couple of them 
I'm being Mr. Nice Guy today. It gives me a 100 reputation. So, you know, a couple more of them and we're loving life even more. Next up, we're back in the gym. And then it's just taking on more gym leaders for about 5 or 10 more days. Getting some more XP. Getting some more reputation. Because that's how you basically get up the gym ranks in this game. You have to get enough reputation. And then it'll activate the next kind of story scene. And then once you do that, you can then get more reputation. And then obviously so on and so on. So then straight back to giving more items to the charity more reputation there straight back into the gym the this guy was lovely this this bug catcher he had like six mons that were all like pretty high leveled but obviously i could just one shot all of them and it was just a nice little bit of xp for my team i could just keep clicking spacebar there was no issue at all so yeah very very happy about that and then we go to the uh, the gym guy the old gym guy should i say i leave and then someone is at the door and lo and behold I bloody go and get myself kidnapped. The the bikers are back. Like I say, it wasn't the last of them that we'd seen last time they were here. And then we're stuck in this kind of cave. And then I have to go to this girl here. If you, you can keep asking for like lumberries and fresh waters, which are quite nice, which I do a little bit. And then I have to actually battle her. Level 30 slants, uh, sand slash, not great for me. Ground types, not fun. Flying types, not fun for Blaziken. And honestly, the people in this cave have just that. They have ground dark, flying dark, which is okay because i have like double kick but you know flying types not good for me ground types not good for me and again a lot of these team members have repeater teams and a lot of them had crocorox and mandibles and stuff anyway it is what it is i don't mind fighting them all because you still get reputation and stuff for battling them so it still all adds up in the end which is very very nice hence why i went and battled like pretty much every single one that i saw and then you have to do this like double battle just to get out of the cave this is quite a tough battle as well they do have like four or five pokemon between them uh, or six should i say and uh, yeah some of them are pretty good but a lot of them you can just one shot like this this porn yard i'm gonna blow him back to 1968 with a fire uh, fire blast or a flamethrower whatever after that we go down here and find the gracidia because basically there's a girl in the town that wants that i then go to this cave here which i hadn't been in in my previous playthroughs it's called transition cave we come out of it and we go into even badder lands and then this guy is here looking all green. I don't know if he's like the Incredible Hulk's uncle or something. And he's basically saying this is an area where the Rogue Riders never took over and the Pokemon are very, very strong. And he was not lying. Level 44 Golem straight out of the park. I'm like, geez, bro, if you are playing as like a psychic gym leader or a rock gym leader or a fighting type gym leader or a ghost type gym leader come to this location because they have some really really good mons here and there's an alakazam on your screen i do decide to come back here later on in the video after i finish the game and there's something really really crazy that happens so make sure to keep watching to find out what that is but yeah i, I really like the fact that i'm still discovering things in this game even though this is like my fourth playthrough Anyway, we take out the final guy. I go into the cave and the mayor is like, Matilda, you've escaped. Thank the Lord. And he's like, bro, those rogue riders, they ain't getting you again. And then Edgar appears. He was actually the rogue rider leader. And he's saying that he didn't organize the capture and that he's a bit sorry about it. But one of us has to be the town leader and it's going to be him. I then go to the mailbox and there are a ton of people that want to join my gym, which I'm very, very happy about because it just gives you more reputation as well the more gym trainers you have. I then go back to the donation people and then this guy gives you a ton of reputation once you've donated quite a few items. It gives me a big fat hunter bomb, which I'm very happy about. Donate more things and then I go to the starter part, which has now opened up because I did escape the rogue riders. And this is where I need to catch more fire types because now I can't go back to the gym unless I have six Pokemon. So I find a Cyndaquil, which is obviously very nice. I didn't really know which starters I wanted, but Cyndaquil was the first one that popped up, so I decided to catch that. We then get a Fennekin pop-up, which I really was happy about because it's a Psychic type. And then we also get Skullbunny as well. Skullbunny, nothing crazy, but it does get fighting type moves. It does get Pyroball, so not too bad. So then I have to go and grind them up, obviously, because even though they're high-leveled, they are not very strong, and uh, that's why I have to go and grind them all up. Skullbunny he starts evolving into Reboot though, which was uh, obviously very, very nice. And again, I'm a big fan of Cinderace, so I wasn't hugely against having this on my team. Cyndaquil also wants to evolve into Quilava. I was quite happy to have a Typhlosion because it does get Eruption. You can get Choice Scarf in this game, so that was obviously very, very nice. And then Fennekin also uh, wants to evolve into Brakesian. Now, I had to have this Pokemon anyway because Psychic would have just been very, very useful. Even though I don't think you go up against that many Fighting-type trainers or Poison-type trainers in this game, but it's still nice to have a little bit of variance. Then after that, straight back to Bliss because I then have to evolve them all once more 
and to get their final evolutions. And so Bliss, I'm sorry to keep destroying these Blissy, but you're making it too easy for me to get this fat XP. Anyway, after the battle, Reboot wants to evolve into Cinderace. He learns Pyro Ball and everything. I do have Heart Scales as well that I go to the guy with just to get more items that they forgot, because obviously Cinderace can get Double Kick and everything. Quilava then wants to evolve into Typhlosion. I also use a Heart Scale to remember Eruption on Typhlosion, because that's basically the best move you can run on Typhlosion. It does get like Inferno and stuff as well, which can be very, very useful. And then Breakson wants to evolve into Delphox, learns Mystical Fire, already has Psychic, also has Will-O-Wisp as well, which is obviously very, very nice for the uh, the pesky physical attackers. And then after that, after they've all evolved, it's straight back to the gym. We take on the Eevee gym trainer. And remember, you can go down to the original like route when you come off the boat. Once you, I don't know what part of the game it is, but it might be this part. You can basically get a free Eevee and then evolve it into any evolution you want. So obviously that's very, very useful. Anyway, we take out all of the trainers. I go to the uh, the backroom staff and the old gym guy's here. And he's talking about family that he's got nearby and that he's been lonely or something. I feel a little bit bad for him. There's a lonely old guy. Anyway, Edgar gives me a letter and he's telling us to meet him at his chambers in the Badlands because he wants to fight me 6v6. So that's exactly what I go and do. Now, previously in the past, I've not struggled with this battle this much because I knew what was coming but with fire types it's quite difficult because he has Garchomp he has other dragons that are just good against fire so I decided to lead off with Smeltix and get my stealth rock up because that would have just been very very useful just to get that residual damage off on any Pokemon that wants to jump in I try and get through his full restores at the start of the battle as well because they are really really annoying like they have so many potions all these like kind of big boss battles it is really really annoying as you can see just keep potioning up anyway take out the Aggron he then comes in with Garchomp I look a uh, burn it with Will-O-Wisp with Delphox. I start going for Psychics and stuff like that. Unfortunately, it does crunch me and take out my Delphox. He then has Metagross. This isn't really a problem for me just because I can one-shot it with Flamethrower. The Garchomp was like the biggest issue really, but we did obviously take that down. He then brings in a Tyranitar, which again, would be very, very bad. But luckily, I have a Blaziken and I'm so happy I went Blaziken over any other starter because... Uh, apart from like Embor and stuff and, and Chimchar, like I, there's no other fighting type Pokemon that I think you can get in the game that are firefighting. But either way, double kick this guy, destroy the Tyranitar. He then brings in a Salamence. Not really a massive issue because I do have Rock Slide. He also took 25% from the Stealth Rock, so we're happy about that. I also have Dragon Breath as well, worst case scenario, and if I need to like paralyze it or whatever. Um, but uh, either way, Rock Slide is just a very nice move on Smeltix. Like I say, this Pokemon is ridiculous. He then brings in the Hydreigon. Luckily, though, I can just double kick this, take out the Hydreigon, and that is Edgar defeated, which again is like the first main boss battle in the game. And this one can throw you off if you're not ready for it, it gives you a lot of reputation. He then says, The town is yours. I elevate to gym leader four which is obviously very very fine and dandy we get some rest and then it's straight back into uh, straight back into work that's just what you got to do you, you finish a big boss battle you're straight back onto the job and so that's uh, that's what we have to do we go into the gym we start taking on these trainers they of course get higher leveled now but we are still relatively okay on the levels like you have to kind of over level for the big boss battles but then you also and then like way too over leveled for the normal gym trainers so it's it's one of those things like you can't go in with your normal levels because otherwise you just get destroyed by Edgar. Like if I went with like high level 30s, low level 40s, like Edgar would just destroy me, which is why I have to over level, especially because he has so many good Pokemon. But anyway, we just keep taking out all these trainers, no problem there. And then after that, we go to the old gym guy and he's saying that there's a young lady looking for a flower. And then he also wants me to do his quest line. He's saying, you know, let me talk to you once the gym day's over. I, I really need you to help me out with something. And as I say, all of the gym people have a different quest line. So this old guy is, I, I guess this is the least exciting one. But either way, he's basically saying that he's got a grandson and he wants to fight a gym leader. And so I thought, okay, maybe this is like a really tough battle and it's going to be like red or something like that. It wasn't. It was just youngster Isaac or whatever. Which was very, very... I don't know. I was just expecting something a lot more. He sends out a Riolu. It's level 42. So, again, it's just like a random gym trainer. But, again, you can only fight this person if you do have the old guy as your kind of gym person. He then has an Arcanine, though, which I thought, okay, fair play. Step up. Youngster Isaac's actually been out in Route 1 and he's been grinding up his Pokemon. And might actually offer me some sort of a challenge. He does have the Intimidate, which is obviously not great. He has Play Rough, which would have been cool if I wasn't Steel Fire type and Quad Resist it. But, anyway... Anyway, I get him with a couple of rock slides, you know, no problem for me at all. Uh, Arcanine is just his strongest Pokemon. I do miss a rock slide though, which is not fun. He play roughs me again. Rock slide the Arcanine though. Uh, that dies. And then his last Pokemon I was really, really hoping would be decent. 
Um, but unfortunately, it wasn't. Trying to learn Stone Edge. I think I'm umming and ahhing, maybe. But no, nah, Stone Edge, that's 70% or whatever it is. I don't like it at all. And then he sends in Zarawa. So no problem for me at all. I go into Cinderace, hit him with a couple double kicks. And that is uh, Isaac's first gym challenge. Well and truly over. You know, hopefully he just grind up a little bit. And then he can come back and start uh, trying to take me on again. But uh, for now... It's, uh, it's not a great day for, for Youngster Isaac. So, yeah, he's basically just saying, you know, wow, thank you so much. I only get 10 reputation. I was like, bro, what are you talking about? And then this gets really deep. He's, like, telling us about when he was born. The doctor made it clear to us that he had, like, some sort of issue. I, I don't know, but really, really dark storyline. Anyway, after that, the champion comes to visit, and we, of course, have to battle him. This is the sort of end stages of the game now. Once the champion pops up, it's basically like, okay, boss battle, boss battle, boss battle. So we have to take him on. And this is uh, this is a really tough battle. Like, with the team I had, I, I struggled on this. And he's obviously level 50s and stuff, so I'm not over-leveled or anything. I start off with an eruption, get a big fat crit, and then he just one-shots my Typhlosion with an earthquake. And I'm like, oh, damn, okay, this is bad. Because I haven't saved it in a while, and I don't want to know what happens if I lose to him. So I bring out Magmorta. He hyper potions up his Smeltix. I go for a flamethrower. Does nowhere near enough damage. He full, uh, full restores again. So I just keep flamethrowing, trying to get rid of all these potions. He gyrobores me, which is very nice. My flame body activates, but then, of course, because your fire type doesn't work. Full restores again. Keeping these flamethrowers coming. He earthquakes my Magmorta. So now I'm two Pokemon down. And he's still only on his first Pokemon. So not great at all. And I'm, I'm thinking here. Maybe he outspeeds my Cinderace. Lucky he doesn't know. I do connect with the Pyro Ball. A bit risky to go for it. Probably should have gone to Double Kick in hindsight. And then he sends out a Gengar. Which again, also very scary. Goes for a Shadow Ball. Does a ton of damage. I one-shot it with Pyro Ball. He then, of course, uh, because of Cursed Body, disables my Pyro Ball. He then sends in Bishop, so obviously Pyro Ball would have been very, very nice, but I do have a Blaziken in the back, I do have Stab Fighting type moves, Bishop is quad weak to Fighting type, so I wasn't too worried about this, somehow outspeeds me though, I have no idea how this thing outsped me, I thought Bishop was relatively slow and Blaziken was fast, but either way, gets nine head off, but I do kill it with a double kick, he then sends in Cherim as well, this is a regional form of Cherim, uh, it is still weak to fire though, which I was very happy about. He lives on like three, tries to get up a solar beam. No problem for me at all though, because I can just e-speed it. That's the Cherim dead. He then sends in Haxorus. And again, I wish I had some sort of fairy type move that Delphox could learn or whatever, but unfortunately I don't. I do go into Smeltix just because I can take kind of any hit with this thing. Like Fire Steel is a really, really nice type, as long as it doesn't have a ground type move or a water type move or whatever. He does go for the Slash though. Once he went for the Slash, I was like, okay, this thing has absolutely nothing for me especially because i have leftovers as well i picked them up somewhere i can't even remember where but just once once i was out gallivanting or whatever i did find the leftovers so it's obviously very very nice for smelting just to get that residual hp back every single turn anyway i dragon breath the haxorus a few times this thing falls i think it does have dragon dance or swords dance or something but luckily, he didn't use it this time. He then also has a, uh, a Gengar in the back as well. Once again, I'm like, bro, two Gengars. This guy is packing heat with this ridiculous team. Uh, so he sends out the Gengar. It does turn out to be a Zorok, though. So I could have gone for a fighting type move this whole time. Goes for the Night Days. I missed the Blaze Kick, obviously. What are the chances? Then he takes out the Blaziken. So happy days with that. So I have to go into a different Pokemon. Still not realizing it was a Zorok, even though I'm pretty sure Gengar doesn't learn Night Days. Anyway, I Pyro Ball. Zorok's Illusion fades. And we take out the Champion. But that was a tough battle. As I say, these boss battles do get quite difficult. The, the majority of Pokemon in this game that the trainers have are like Dark, Dragon, uh, with maybe a couple of fighting types in there. So, not like the best kind of Pokemon for me to take on. We then go into the gym and we are greeted by this guy. And this is the previous gym leader. We do have to fight him. This guy, I only realized on this playthrough that he was a normal type gym leader. Obviously, I'm a fire type gym leader and every time there's a new gym leader, you have to be a, a certain type. And yeah, he was actually normal. So he had a Wigglytuff, like a Furret, an EV, all this stuff. So yeah, I, I didn't realize how I didn't click onto that before. Anyway, Sandy comes into the gym. And the gym leader, well, the ex-gym leader, should I say, just kind of tells us about what happened where they threatened to get rid of him or threatened to get rid of the gym trainers and stuff unless he like fled the gym. And that's basically what he did. That's why he left. And even though everyone hates him, he kind of had good morals why he did it. After that, we go back into the gym. Sandy is once here uh, again. And she does basically say, look, you're level seven now you're smashing it however though i do have this letter for you and it's basically the same letter that the other gym leader got telling me to like leave i then take it to the mayor 
who's saying that it must be the Rogue Riders in the Badlands. Once again, they must be threatening us. Go over there and sort them out. And that's exactly what I do. I go to the Badlands. I go to the Rogue Riders. But Edgar's outside the cave and he's like, look, my guys have been really annoying. They're keeping me out of the cave. They're following orders from somebody else. And I'm like, who? And then he's like, the mayor. Didn't you realize he was being a bit weird? And then we actually have to go and fight the mayor. So the mayor is technically the final boss of the Pokemon this gym of mine, Rom. And uh, yeah, it, really, really tough battle. So he leads with the Dusclops. I, of course, lead with my Smell Ticks to get those rocks up. Very, very nice to have Stealth Rocks. I would have liked Poison uh, or Toxic Spikes or just regular Spikes or whatever. Would have been very, very useful. But either way, I'm trying to get my rocks off. He Confuse raised me. A lot of the time, he tries to Toxic Store you, which also can be annoying. Luckily, I'm a Steel type, so that doesn't work. Uh, so I do get my Stealth Rocks off and get my Rock Slide off. Take out the Dust Glops. He then sends out an uh, Gudra who takes out my Delphox. Delphox died a lot in this playthrough. Like, to say it was a pretty cool Pokemon to have, it didn't really do much. So Gudra comes in. I decide to Dragon Breath it. Uh, I do kill that. He then sends out a Dragonite who was Dragon Dancing. I luckily got a Paralysis off on my Dragon Breath though, so it wasn't really a massive issue. I thought I could have took a few attacks from him anyway. He then sends in a Rhydon, which is kind of a destroyer of my team. I have nothing for Rhydon. Like, I have fighting type moves, but Rhydon's physical defense is so good, it was just awful. So he took out like two, three of my Pokemon. Luckily though, he then sends in a Scizor. I decide to get up a Sunny Day just so I can definitely one-shot this and whatever wants to come in next. So I do take out the Scizor, who did try and get a Swords Dance up. And then after that, he does send out an Aegislash, Slash, which again, on another day would have been a bit of a problem. It's level 56. Luckily, I've got the Sun up though. I Flamethrower. Aegislash Slash does fall, and that that is the mayor defeated in Pokemon this gym of my get a thousand reputation and we are finished with the kind of main storyline the mayor basically gets arrested the police come sort him out I don't know why no one else ever clocked on or anything it seemed to only be Edgar Edgar probably should have told me earlier that look that that mayor is a bit of a bad guy so anyway, we're elevated to gym leader rank number eight. And then we get a phone call from the Pokemon League, basically just congratulating us on the job that we're doing and that uh, we basically now have finished the game, but we should go around and just kind of complete remainder quests and stuff. But I want to go back to the Battlelands and see what it's all about. So I go back, talk to Hawk's uncle, and then run in. I've obviously got repels on because the Pokemon in this area are ridiculous. I then find my way down here and there's a little route up here on the left. And once you follow that, there is another, I guess, green person, Hulk's auntie. And she's saying that this place has a history of odd things happening and that this cave just opened up. I walk in and I enter this room called Question Mark. And I come down here and this guy's, this guy's like, hello, please come in. Hello, Matilda. Oh, you look confused. My name is Shane, but you probably know me as Omegas. He basically is the creator of Pokemon, this gym of mine. And he's saying that he's got a small request. He wants me to battle him. Um, he's a super boss of the game. And if we win, he will give me something good. So I think, okay, gonna be fine then. I mean, I just took out the mayor very easily and I should have no problem with Shane. So I go into the battle. Lo and behold, though, Shane ain't no pushover. He ain't messing around. He sends out a level 90 bloody 9 Steelix. I have nothing for this. Absolutely nothing. So, as you would believe, Steelix just destroys my whole team. We do get through the Steelix, though, with my level 50s, which I was very proud of, because Steelix is a very annoying Pokemon. I had to Willow Split about four times. Then sends in a Floatzel, though. I got nothing for bloody Floatzel, and he just one-shots me. So, yeah, I'm not going to be grinding up to 99, because it'll take forever, but if you do want to play Play the final super boss of this gym of mine you basically go to the battlelands and uh, keep following the, the path around and you will find him level 1919 i don't know what else he has but if you enjoyed the video drop a like leave a comment subscribe if you're brand new and until next time peace